So, what do you think? I am super happy, guys. Uh, I know it's a crazy turn for the channel. I know a lot of things are gonna change. Uh, we're still gonna do a lot of the amazing things, but let me show you around. So, what do you think? Here it is. This is effectively gonna be the channel's new workhorse. So, if you saw the last video, you'll know what's going on. Um, so this is what we found. This is the guy that we went out looking all over America for, uh, for the best vehicle, for the best thing that we could find, uh, for the money we wanted to spend. And remember, this is all prefaced off of something, you know, that we're gonna do a, a budget rig build. And I know you're gonna go, oh my God, it's a Raptor. Well, hold on, please stop. Uh, before you even go on that rant, I assure you right now, every Jeep, JK and JL, and Toyota Tacoma and Tundra and Ranger and F-150 and all that stuff is more expensive than this dude right here, but not more capable. So I told you guys, I wanted to find the best bang for the buck. So what I found was a 2012 Ford Raptor with 67,000 miles on it, two owners, and we got it for 32.5, 32. Five. 32. Now I told you guys my budget high was gonna be 40 because I felt like if you had an income of 60,000, that 40 would be the most you'd ever wanna pay for something. And a lot of people do. And so what I, I did is I said, I, well, I wanna go into 35. And so I found this and it took us forever to find this. And we found it in San Diego. I got, got on the phone with this guy. He was a super cool guy. I ended up flying out, picking it up and driving it all the way back. Um, and it was fantastic, it, it was fantastic. Now, yes, I know it's not a rock crawler, but I'll kind of explain that real quick. So, for the people just gonna watch this channel right now, and this is your first video, so go back and look into history and you'll see that I've had a bunch of different Jeeps and stuff. And highly capable, the problem with that highly capable thing is exaggerated price tag. And so we're no longer gonna do that. We are absolutely going to go back to what everybody can afford and how you can build it on your own and how you can build it with your financial budget. Uh, and we're gonna do that as a general rule of thumb for this whole truck. And so I looked for something that already had some mild things done to it or you know, had something we could work with like every one of you guys would do. You would look for the best bang for your buck if you went into Kelly's Blue Book and said, hey, I can spend 25,000, you would shop for weeks trying to figure out which the what best vehicle fits that 25,000 and has the most that you could already use, less that you had to buy after. And that's what I did with this. And so here it is. It's a Ford Raptor. It's awesome. Um, I thought about things like capability. Off-road capability is the number one important thing that we do. You guys know that I love to go way in the back country and um, I like to not rely on anybody and I like to make sure I'm going places that not everybody goes and I'm and taking a route to get to any place important, maybe other, other ways that people don't go. And so I feel like this is a vehicle. Um, the guy that had it before me, he fabbed these bumpers and the sliders and stuff. And I'll tell you this, um, they're not my cup of tea because I would do them a little differently. But what we're gonna do is again, we're gonna do this budget bill. I'm not buying bumpers. I'm not, you know, ordering any ADV bumpers or anything like that. All the things for this thing, just like a JL or a Gladiator or a Tacoma or a Tundra are high or a Forerunner high. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this platform uh, budget minded. How would we do it? How do I tell you guys to do it? What's the most important thing? Hey, where should we start? So 
There's a couple things that we have to do and I'll talk about it uh, in the next couple of videos, but there is some stuff that I need to do immediately to get it um, inspected here in Texas. And one of those has to do with the headlights. The headlights are so poor that um, that they just went and passed inspection. Uh, they do have tent on them, but even pulling a tent, I looked at them, they're, they're terrible. So we're gonna, that's, that'll be like the first thing that we do, the mod, and, and when I do that mod, I'm gonna kinda go, ahead, go into the vehicle and tell you more about how we're gonna change it and what we're gonna use that's existing now and in moving into the future. Um, Cause there's a potential that this is gonna be a long range vehicle. And the reason why I'm saying that is because if you watch the last video, and maybe I'll tag it up here, or here, 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 here. <laughs> you guys just got me dancing. Um, either way we tag it, I go into detail about what's been going on financially with me and my job and, and hardships and things that everybody else is going, on, going along with. Uh, and that there's a potential that I'm gonna kind of swing this channel a little bit more towards long range uh, deep woods camping and overlanding and more stuff like that. It's still all the aggressive stuff. Uh, obviously, I probably can't take this up Hell's Revenge, but I'm going to take it a lot of places. I am going to do some good things with it. I think that you guys will appreciate what we do with it, and we're going to make it a hybrid. The unfortunate thing is um, the Gladiator's got to go, and I spent a long time learning and a long time building to make that dude as good as it is. As we're speaking now, the 538 gears just got done. I've got a box over there with heavy duty uh, rod end links, uh, sway bar end links, uh, because I broke some in at Maris a few weeks ago. Dude, ladies and gentlemen, that truck is amazing. It just doesn't fit the budget anymore. So I'm getting rid of it. I'm gonna sell it and this is gonna take its place. And so again, legendary off-road truck, high performance truck, we're not gonna have to supercharge this thing. We're not gonna have to do all those kind of crazy things. It will get gears just like everybody else does, but we'll talk about that in the next video when I go into the mods and what we're gonna do left. What I wanna do is do a real quick walk around and kinda of show you what we're working with and just introduce them. And then I need to hear from you guys in the comments below, what's its name gonna be, right? And I've been kicking around maybe changing um, maybe the channel name because it relates to my Jeeps. You know, um, both the JL and the Gladiator, the JT, um, they were based off Greek and warrior fighters and stuff like that, and so Roman fighters. Um, and so, I don't know, I mean, it kinda doesn't really fit, you know, it's kinda a little different. So, let me know in the comments below if you think we need to change the name. Uh, something to more representative of just kind of what we're going to be doing moving forward in the future. And and that being that, you know, if we do take, turn this thing into a long range guy, that means that, you know, instead of me taking like three day travel, seven day travel, you know, when I go on excursions, I'll do something like a month or two months before I return home and really take you guys through some really long, ridic ridiculous um, back roads and the back parts of the country that we really don't get to see because we're always trying to get to a destination instead of meandering our way to it. So anyway, that's kind of the that's kind of the theory about what's going on now. Anyway, think of a name. Let's take a walk. Anyway, guys, here he is. Um, you can see it's got the SVT factory bead locks, uh, which was nice that he he had those. Uh, these are custom bumpers that they built. This is the stuff I was talking about that will change a little bit because. Obviously the fit and finish is kind of not how I would have done it. So um, I'll end up bringing that bar up to that body line. And then of course, bringing that bumper in, it needs to come in several inches, probably, you know, full inch and a half to get it to where I want it. But it's already got a topper and I'm gonna use this guy for a while. Um, it's carpeted on the inside. Um, we'll build a platform in there and I'll basically use this as, you know, my, um, dwelling to camp in when, you know, we're camping for the next year or so. So if you guys have ideas or schematics or things you saw that would be great for a camper build out, that's what we're doing. Yes, it's five and a half bed. 
and I am gonna have to sleep at somewhat of an angle this way, but it's not dramatic and, and it won't really matter because it won't hinder how I plan to build it. I've drawn a couple plans of my head. So that being said, I think it'll end up working out pretty well. Um, but same kind of thing. He built his own side steps. And they're really, it's a really neat design. It needs to be a little wider and a little flatter is the only problem. Um, there's some stuff that I can work with on it, but it needs to be attached to the frame as well. And these are attached to the body mounts, which is good for now. But remember guys, this is, we're gonna do all of this stuff on a budget. So I'm gonna use as much as I can uh, that he has. Now you can see down there, I was lucky enough uh, to find a guy that had already done the 3.0 King Shock upgrade. And those are the ready lift uh, upper control arms. And it definitely makes a difference. It, it feels fantastic when you're driving it. Now, unfortunately, when he was ordering those, they didn't, the Kings weren't available for the rear. So what he did is he went and bought some brand new OEM Raptor factory 3.0s and installed them on this thing. And to be honest, with the factory 3.0s, and I'll give you a shot of them, uh, and the add leaf he did by Ready Leaf, it really feels planted and feels good. Um, so, there's lots of stuff we get to work with that we get to start with, and that's what I was saying. I was trying to do my very best to pick the vehicle that had as much as uh, could be possible to start with without having to spend lots of money doing it. And that's why, you know, for the $32,000, I feel like this is the best bang for the buck. Obviously, the Ford Raptor comes with a rear locker. So, like I said, what we'll do, one of the biggest changes that'll be made is gearing. It does need gearing because I think the 410s in this truck just kind of leave a lot to be desired in the beginning. So, responsiveness and stuff like that as we start building it out and putting weight on it would definitely fall to the wayside. And that's where it's where it's most important, kind of getting out of the way of traffic and getting onto traffic, out of traffic. And then when we're climbing things, we want as much mechanical uh, advantage as we can. So therefore you don't have to bang on a rock to get over it. You, you can apply more of your torque to the tire to be able to slowly and gradually climb up and over something versus having to kind of bound it with, hit it with a little bit of gas and, and kind of pop up and over it. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's how we break things. And so anyway, it came with the factory upfitter switches and, and he's got a little deck in there. That's probably not my style. I'll end up changing that to something uh, more usable, but again, it's a great truck. I am, going to take out half the seat. So from this side over here, over there to that, that one line right there will come out. We'll box it, we'll build a plate, we'll leave something over there where they can sit, and on, on that end, I'll build an armrest and a cup holder, but the battery system for the whole truck will reside in the middle where that cushion is. And we're probably gonna do some, you know, lithium and some Red Arc and Victron stuff. Uh, as we go and and basically just wait till they come on sale on Amazon, which they do and we'll just kind of slowly put it together but My thoughts are to make a deck platform here and then drawers and so on this side and in the bottom will be uh, tools and In this area we'll have things like spare parts and then at the top, I'm thinking about doing all the the drone batteries and camera batteries and just accessory power stuff. So again, power in the middle for the whole camper, um, the secondary batteries, the, the inverter, all those types of things, where the solar stuff comes in, and then a box system here. I'm thinking, moving forward, that when I do build, uh, let's see if I can get the keys for this, guys. I'm thinking that when I do build the back system, 
that the center portion um, will, will house one box. And the reason why I wanna do that is I don't like having a bunch of stuff that slides in and slides out. I'd rather build it in. And so my thoughts are the one box, and this is what I'll stress to you guys too, guys with racks and things like that, is your recovery gear. And the reason why I say that is because your re recovery gear gets nasty and it's terrible. And it's nice to open a box, go use it, throw a box back in it with it muddy and nasty, and slide it back in. Nothing gets dirty. It doesn't get your drawers dirty. doesn't get the inside of your vehicle dirty. And, and it's kind of a quick grab item, right? So depending on where you have it, makes it you know, accessible or not. And so I think a box like that would be easy. You could open the window and pull it out. You could drop the tailgate and pull it out. All that stuff makes it accessible and, and readily easy. Uh, everything else, in my opinion, just needs to be built in. So uh, my thoughts are the refrigerator will be right here on the send. Uh, I haven't decided if it'll be a slide out or if it'll just be stationary. And then the cabinets will be made you know, along that rail, and then of course across the back and then down this side here. And so it'll essentially look like a U and in the middle, there'll just be basically be a small footwell area where that tote will slide in. And that tote also will act as a step to get in and out of here. I'll be able to, you know, can't pull that thing out and slide it out and lay it right here and stamp on it, climb into the back of this truck. Um, now I said it will have an aisle right here at the end of the aisle, the way it'll be built, there'll be a somewhat uh, angled, we'll call it a, a, a flip up. And that'll flip up and make a bed that'll be able to sleep from this corner here all the way to that front angle, kind of where that shadow is. And that's over 70 inches, so, or right at 69 inches or something like that. So that should be more than enough. And and I'm not the tallest guy in the world. I'm, I'm barely scraping 5'9", so. Uh, that'll give me enough room and then again when i wake up i can pull the pins and leg and let it lay back down and it'll lay against this side so this side here will most likely be one drawer that pulls out because if it opened this way then that's that flip down would be in its way um, in that drawer i will make um, allotments for you to get in from the top so if you're sitting in here relaxing and you're in and it's raining and stuff, I wouldn't have to open the back to slide this out. It'll have two functioning doors, the top and the actual drawer side. That way, if I'm in there chilling out, it's raining, da -da -da -da, it's snowing, whatever, I can still get to everything I need in these bins. And then on this side, what I wanna do is just along that window partition, there'll be a small sink and then that's where my stove will be. And so I'll be able to kind of do everything I need to be inside and not have to stand outside and do it if the weather's bad. So anyway, that's it guys. I hope it, uh, you know, impresses you like it is me. I know it's not that dude right there. And it's funny how much bigger he is than this, but um, <laughs> it is what it is. I hope you like it. I hope you understand why why we're doing, oh, my hat looks terrible. Uh, why we're doing what we're doing and kind of how we're moving forward. Um, in the next videos, I'll talk about how, how and what we're gonna do and start with. And then, you know, drop comments below. If you know of specific tires that you run that are not the name brand that everybody does, I sent out a thing not too long ago on Instagram about the Kanadi Mud Hog. Um, and the, co the course, the Comforcer CF3000, that tire is hugely popular in like Japan, Australia, Spain, um, Taiwan, Russia, um, which is not, not to bring them up, but anyway, that's what we're looking at. So if you know of some tires, let me know because they're going to need them soon. I'm going to try to get it inspected with these things on, but they're past the wear mark. So they may say no, either way, I'm going to get that knocked out. Um, and we're going to start the upgrades slowly and methodically. And the first thing is getting it inspected. So those will be the first upgrades. I've got some headlights, uh, on order and I've got the LEDs on order for it. And then, um, we're going to get, we're going to have to get some tires. I'm sure I'm going to try to get it. Like I said, I'm going to try to get it 
inspected first, but if they say no, we're gonna get those, then we'll get it inspected, and then, then we'll move forward. But, I will tell you this. The first big item, the first big item, like I always tell you guys, I know what we're gonna do with this truck. It's got a 6'2", 411 horsepower, 411 foot-pounds of torque. I don't care. That's, that's all factory. What do we need to do first? Because we're gonna put so much on it. The first big thing we'll do, guys, is gears. Now, I haven't talked to Randy's yet at Yukon. Uh, that may be the route we do, but we'll see. So, anyway, stay tuned. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for supporting me. I know I say uh a lot. I'm just trying to make sure that I recite everything that I need to get across in each one of these videos. I'll definitely say this. Um, I appreciate all you guys, and I appreciate all of you reaching out and supporting the channel in the means you have. We're going to be... We're still kicking around the Patreon. I don't know if we want to do that, if, if you guys think we should, to kind of help compensate for some of the build costs on this thing. Uh, let me know. Uh, I've really kind of considered it now for that reason. Um, regardless of what we do, what we do do to it is going to be budget-minded. Even the lights, even you know, whatever upgrades we do, if there's a more money-conscious way to do it, that's what we're going to do. So anyways... Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.